Wow, this sure isn't the way your grandmother used to bake her raspberry pies, is it? This is my raspberry pie four, and my setup is what I did here with a with a ribbon cable going through my ni a nice little uh, mechanical case that came with the kit that I got. But uh, here is my breadboard, and I use this little tiny one to run this big one here. Should anything happen, maybe I got a better chance of escape, escaping my pie that it won't get too damaged should anything happen. But these little tiny wires here, they're uh, core wiring, and they won't fit in the other breadboards. They only fit in here, but it's okay. At least that tidies this up a bit. And this here is uh, my lights, and all these lights are all connected to GPIOs. I'm eventually trying to make this thing become a clock, but so far, the on switch is only an on switch. If there is no off switch yet, I, I'm trying to still figure that out if I can actually make a thread loop stop. But here's what happens. I turn that on, and this here shows you what's happening. It tells you everything what's happening. And at the same time, it shows you the time convergence of 24 hour and 12 hour. And it shows you the month, day, and year. And then it shows you my little scripture. As you'll soon see. And these lights here do all the fancy work here. And this here is my little tiny screen that I use. Its brand name is a long runner, but these are how I use it. This is what I type into when I want to do any codes. here tells you all about the clock then it tells you what you shows you what you got to do to program it anything that you see with a hashtag that means a comment but uh, this is a pretty big program actually it's 600 something lines long but uh yeah this is something I've only had for about two months almost two months so maybe a little over two months and I'm slowly learning it brand new to me I've never done one of these before it's pretty fascinating and so far I haven't got electrocuted yet and I don't plan to either but uh, other than that though this here is my my other piece of material in the kitchen where I can look out my pinouts on my desktop so that way I can see exactly where I marked some things even though now I've, I've changed some pins there was a 36 on here but now it's the RGB which is 12, 16, and 18 I'm using now we're not shown here so this little board of mine it's always changing the more I evolve with the raspberry pie. And like I said, this is sure is not your grandmother's recipe because putting this thing together was kind of intimidating. I had to really do a lot of research. I mean, a whole lot of research. But other than that, though, I'm, I'm off the ground and I'm doing things. I, I just need more resistors because I got another project I want to do here with the, these little LED metrics. I need eight resistors that go in the middle of this board here. So that's why there's such a long space in between the two integrated circuits. What they do yet, I have no idea. Like I said, I'm really still new to this pie, but from watching videos and stuff, I learned what to do, kind of, and what not to do, and what you should do. But this setup here is all my own unique setup. I didn't get this from a video. This is my own idea, and I'm really, I really, I'm really liking it. It's a really good idea. And that way it's less uh, able to, you won't be able to yank a pin out as easy as you would if you weren't using uh, a ribbon cable. And it's good to use that with a cobbler because that way you got nothing really touching anything physically inside the, the pie except for the ribbon cable. But other than that, the little keyboard, or this keyboard, it works great. It actually, this thing actually works great. It's slow on the mouse speed a bit, but who cares? 
But uh, the, the, this uh, raspberry pie is definitely something that's different. Definitely. Okay, and I'll show you some other neat little things. Now, I may not have mentioned it before. I might have mentioned it, but the reason this off switch, I can't get it to turn off, is this clock here is running on a Python thread. And what that means, it's doing two things with the processor. So instead of the processor saying, well, let's wait for this instruction to go first, then I'll do this one. It's not doing that. It's actually working together at the same time. But if you make a runaway while loop inside of a thread, it's going to remain as a runaway while loop. There's no way I can stop this thread. Even though I can push control C for my keyboard interrupt that I put in there, everything stops. But if you notice, this little guy just doesn't know that he stops. And he just keeps on going with the time through the Wi-Fi. Not missing a beat. Now that's the, that, that's the reason too why I'm also having a problem with the switch and my lights are also in a while loop on each of their functions that never end. Except for the functions that end, but the whole loop of functions just keep repeating themselves over and over and over again. So I got no way to turn off this off switch for now. But anyway, on for our next little, uh, little ride here. Uh, it's a good idea to maybe make a pin hit, a pin out. So I made a pin out. And uh, how it goes, it goes like this. And then we got this. It says you're, I'm using the, I'm using breadboard method or board method. I call it breadboard, but it's called board method. I'm not using BCM, which is Broadcom. BCM is for the actual GPIO number that you see, GPIO number four, which will be my very, very first light right here. That's GPIO number four, right there. But on pin and board, it's called number seven. It's just known as pin number seven. I use all my pins that way. Oh, like as I as I'll show you, number pin number twelve is the color blue for the actual LED. For the actual one of the colors of the LED light, as you as you can see here. And then when I go sixteen, it'll go green. So on the camera, it kind of looks yellow, but it's actually green because I'm looking at the new screen on my GoPro. And then on eighteen, it's going to be red. But it might be a different color too, it might look yellow on here, but it's supposed to be red. In the dark, it'll be red. But uh, I got that at the end of the video, so not to worry. But you're going to do some learning first. But anybody that's new out here, if you're going to write programs for your Raspberry Pi, either in Python or C, I use Python, I don't use C, you should always make a keyboard interrupt and make sure you use your DTPIO cleanup command. That way it shuts everything off down here. You know the clock ain't shut down, at least this all is. And it's good to do that, that way if you wanna add something to your little breadboard, you can do it more safely than always having to turn off your pie. Now, now if you're gonna play with your clock, your display, anything heavier, you should turn off your, your, your pie, especially if you're not sure of what you're doing at first until you get something to work. But always turn down your off your pie if you're not sure of how something's gonna work if you're experimenting like me. This is new to me, like I said. This is only two months I've had this and I'm, I've gotten this far and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty intense at times. But I love it. And uh, this here is my little trusty little pinout that I think I just pre previously showed. And as I'll show you, some of these pinouts are no longer used. I was using a 32, now it's a 22 for this guy here on this guy in the end, right here. And then I pushed enter. That's 22 right there. That's pin 22. I think that's GPIO 12. No, 18 is 12. That's that's probably 32. That one there, a different 32, not the GPIO 32. But uh, other than that, though, I'm using the bread. I'm using the board uh, method, not uh, BCM. I was told B board is a lot more accurate, no matter where the pins are. So I'm just going by people's advice on a lot of this stuff here because. I'm, I'm middle-aged and I'm trying to keep myself basic for breadboard electronics and so far I've had quite a good time with it. And uh, that's my Raspberry Pi. And this is the actual layout I really did choose and I'll stick with this layout till I, till it's in. And one thing I did forget to mention is always make sure you got your 
core wires over the bridge of that pie, I mean that breadboard, because there's a little gap that has no power. But those little tiny red wires, they act like a bridge, and they jump the power to the lights that come on. And this little black guy right here, this little black wire right here, he goes into this little power, right over here, this little uh, five volt power thing. So what I do is I got that running all the way down that rail along the resistors that light up all those lights except for this little guy right here this little guy right here he's already got a, a power node going to the three volt three and a half volt there three volt sorry and then uh he goes right in the middle and the resistors are just stuck in the breadboard they're not touching any rails not like these guys here are these guys here are all touching the negative rail except for him and if i did have him there which I did, he lights up white when you turn him off, so that's what was confusing. So this is all new to me, but I'm catching on. Slowly but surely I'm catching on. Okay, I hope I gave you a good pie lesson, and I hope you liked the little tree I did in this little video. Thanks for watching, bye bye. Yeah, before I go, I got one more little tip I forgot to mention. I bought a set of breadboards, I've only kept this one here to be like a pin cushion. But I'm not gonna say you from, but they, you know, they were 20 bucks, under 20 bucks. So I thought I'd get like breadboards. I thought a breadboard was a breadboard. But after being disappointed and wondering why I had such poor connection, an unstable connection, I couldn't get the light to stay on right bright or it'd go a little lower, shimmy in between. I wasn't getting trustworthy looking connection as if it looked like it was shorting out or something like that. Nothing connected right. Well, I searched on video to see if there was breadboard comparisons out there, and apparently, yeah, there was. And there's only really two good companies that make them. I got a Jimico, and the other one's called Prototype something. Uh, prototype Systems. That's what it's called, Prototype Systems and Jimico. They're the only two, apparently, that make good breadboards. So if you're on the hunt for breadboards, please, please research what you buy. Because you might be kicking yourself if you don't. But I will not trust this on anything. And now we'll have some fun since I told you this little nightmare story and we'll get to our lights.